everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. In my last episode, I took a look at Hoodwinked, and while the animation wasn't that great, it had genius writing as well as memorable and lovable characters. And it is one of my favorite fairy tale parodies ever. But six years later, because Hoodwinked was a box office success, a sequel was made. But how does it compare to the first Hoodwinked? Well, let's find out. Released on April 29th, 2011, the movie is Hoodwinked 2 Hood vs. Evil. So, let's get this case cracking. While training with the mysterious Sisters of the Hood, Red gets an urgent call from Nikki Flippers of the Happily Ever After Agency that a wicked witch had kidnapped Hansel and Gretel along with her grandmother, Abigail Puckett. Accompanied by Wolf W. Wolf and Twitchy, Red sets out to Big City to rescue her granny. So, what do I think about this movie? Well, like the first film, I never saw it in theaters, though I wanted to. But after renting it from Netflix, despite the countless negativity and a huge bombing at the box office, I consider it a guilty pleasure. And... It became one of my top 13 bad films that I like. But before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to Mustang Notes. In February 2006, Corey Edwards announced that he, along with Todd Edwards and Tony Leach, would write the sequel, though they would not return as directors. Corey Edwards cited many reasons for not returning as a director for the sequel. In addition to wanting to focus on other, particularly live-action films, so as not to be confined to animation, he explained that there has been a tense working relationship between him and some of the key players on the first film. He also questioned the integrity of the fractured fairy tale genre of which Hoodwing is part of, calling it a trend that he groaned about even as he finished the movie. Initially, the film was going to be independently funded by Canbar Entertainment with the Weinstein Company distributing, as has been done with the previous movie. However, the two companies entered into a co-financing agreement at the behest of the Weinstein Company. In March 2007, it was announced that Mike Disa, who had long worked in the animation industry, would make his directorial debut on the film. While Disa had not seen the original film before approaching to direct the sequel, Corey Edwards expressed enthusiasm over his involvement, saying that he has a real passion for the film and a devotion to maintaining the hoodwinked world. He wants to do the sequel justice, and he really gets what we're trying to do. The sequel's animation was produced by Canadian Animation and visual effects studio Arc Productions. Also, like the first movie, Maya software was used to create the film's animation. Rendering was done on Mental Ray, Compositing was done on Fusion, and Mate paintings were created on Photoshop. The explosions featured in the film were created using Maya and Houdini. In my opinion, the animation is a vast improvement over the first Hoodwinked. The character animation is a lot more smooth and fluid, and bash me if you want, but I really like the look of Big City, which is a modern looking fairy tale metropolis, and it feels kind of like a mix of San Francisco and New York. 
As for the Dark Castle Towers Hotel, which happens to be the villain's base, is very mysterious. And it's heavily secured with pigs surrounding the place. As for the story, well, it was okay. I mean, it's a little bland and clichéd at times, but mixed with the comedic animation, it's not so bad. On the other hand, some parts do bring back a lot of fond memories from the first movie. Plus, to me, the action and fight scenes are pretty funny, but hardcore at the same time. Another thing I like about this movie is the soundtrack from I Can Do It Alone, sung by Hidden Panettiere, Perfect 2, sung by Siege, and You Know It, sung by Lave Cole and Andrea Ramanda. Now, aside from the writing having several hiccups, there are a few flaws that I saw, like a few characters from the first movie being recycled as background characters or random city citizens. Some of the jokes work out pretty okay, while several others can be way too silly, a tad embarrassing, random, or unnecessary. Plus, there's a running gag with Japheth the Singing Goat either getting run over, crushed, blown up, or stepped on, which feels kind of mean-spirited in my opinion. Anyway, that's all I got for Mustang Notes, so let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought them to life. Our main character, Little Red Riding Hood Puckett, is this time voiced by Hayden Panettiere. who got to be Dot in A Bug's Life, Suri from Dinosaur, Kairi from Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, Channing Walsh from Racing Stripes, and Kate in Alpha and Omega. In my personal opinion, I think Hayden Panettiere's voice for Red is a lot better than Anne Hathaway's. No offense. Plus, I think Red still has her spunkiness and kick-ass martial arts skills. Plus, I think Red is extremely talented, like when she uses her cape as a bungee rope, a hang glider, or a parachute. <laughs> wow! Plus, I like the scene where Red fights a four-armed troll. However, the only flaw with Red is her overconfidence, or her belief, that she can solve the crime without a partner, she constantly bickers with Wolf, and she can also be very sensitive when someone calls her a scared little girl. Red's grandmother, Abigail Puckett, is once again voiced by Glenn Close. To me, Granny is very stealthy while being in charge of the HEA's ground unit. Plus, I like the part where she was able to outsmart Verushka so that she could try to escape. Next is the former Once Upon a Times reporter, Wolf W. Wolf, again voiced by Patrick Warburton. In this film, Wolf can rather be bombastic, and overconfident like Red. But on the positive side, Wolf is actually a very determined, bold, and good guy from the bone with a heart on the right side, willing to help and protect the others. Also, while Wolf is still a master of disguise, I think his costumes kind of make him look like Abraham Lincoln with a white beard. Wolf's partner, Twitchy Squirrel, is again voiced by Corey Edwards. While his speech is not as fast as in the first movie, Twitchy is still my favorite character, and I think some of his quotes are pretty funny, like, Norwegian? Or, Stink Rat? Plus, 
I like the part where Twitchy convinces Wolf that Red needs his help, even if she won't admit it. Next we come to the head of the Happily Ever After Agency, Nikki Flippers, voiced again by the late David Ogden Steers. To me, Flippers hasn't really changed at all since the first movie, and I still think he's a suave and debonair private detective. It should also be noted that this was Steers' final voice role in an animated movie before his death in 2018. Next up is Kirk Kirkendall, who this time is voiced by Martin Short. In this movie, Kirk is a big hit member of the Happy Yodelers. While he doesn't have a big role here, I like that Red and Wolf enlist his and the Happy Yodelers' help in order to infiltrate the Dark Castle Towers and rescue Granny. Also, I like that the Yodelers used to be mercenaries before they were a singing group. Our first new character is Varushka Van Vine, voiced by Joan Cusack. Best known from the Toy Story sequels, along with Looney Tunes Back in Action, Mars Needs Moms, and Klaus. Varushka is a witch who used to be one of Granny's classmates at the Sisters of the Hood. Her reason for being evil is because Varushka grew jealous of Granny's amazing accomplishments, and she hated that she was always second best. So, Varushka stole the recipe for the Super Truffle and teamed up with Hansel and Gretel to get revenge. Also, there is one plot point where Varushka is a cleaning lady at the London Bridge Asylum, where she's been receiving specific ingredients from Boingo. But, nearing the end of the movie, Varushka gains a change of heart after Hansel and Grail betray her, and when Granny tells her that she was never second best to her. Also, I like the part where Varushka tamed a giant spider. Next we come to Hansel and Gretel, voiced by Bill Hader and Amy Poehler, who were both in Inside Out. Unlike their fairy tale counterparts, where they are poor children who were abandoned in a forest, these kids are revealed to be evil masterminds. Man. I never seen villains this young since Darla Dimple or Princess Morbucks. Anyway, Hansel and Gretel's evil plan is to capture Granny and force her to create the Super Truffle while pretending to be in danger. After the truffle is baked, they plan to sell it to every villain so that they can be unstoppable. Another character to talk about is the Giant, voiced by Brad Garrett. This guy runs the Beanstalk Club in Big City. Judging by his personality, he seems like a mob boss resembling that of Tommy DeVito from Goodfellas. Also, the Giant hates it when someone touches his property. One item notably being Jimmy Ten Strings, and he also abuses his rhino henchmen as he roughly slapped one of them into a wall. Another thing to say about the giant is that, according to Flippers, he's a fan of animated movies, as he apparently blogs about them on a regular basis. Hmm. That kind of sounds kind of sounds like me, along with several others like Huey Toonmore, the cartoon hero, the animated heroine, or Animat. <clears throat> anyway, on to my final words. 
overall, Hoodwink 2, Hood vs. Evil, is not a great sequel, but it's still a guilty pleasure for me. Sure, the animation is improved, the action scenes are pretty cool, and the soundtrack is fun to listen to, but the writing has several hiccups and plot holes. A few jokes were pretty funny, while most were completely useless. On the positive side, most of the main characters were great and memorable, despite some minor problems like Red's overconfidence, and the villains were kind of pretty surprising and a little bit interesting. It may not be the worst animated sequel I've ever seen. Trust me, I've seen way worse. Still, I think it's a movie that you and your family should watch. Just not all the time. So, I give this movie a 60% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time where I take a look at another animated fairy tale spoof. Mustang Power! Mm -hmm.